Where does one begin with Hegel? It seems there just isn't anywhere, not within Hegel's direct works anyway. Called by some a philosopher's philosopher, Hegel is portrayed by many as something only the seasoned philosopher can approach. Seasoned you must be. Or was it that seasoned you must become? In the preface to the phenomenology, where Hegel famously argues against prefaces, the great and important point is made that the absolute is a result. That is, what we are seeking to know, what we are seeking to find, will only be found at the end. Thus Hegel invites us to jump in, without any idea of what we really are in for. To worry about being prepared to engage Hegelian philosophy is to miss the point of Hegelian philosophy. That's not to say that background isn't necessary or helpful. As a matter of fact, uh, I'd say that a good overview article on Hegel's philosophy in general and what it kind of aims at, it's a pretty good thing to have. It gives some notion of what you're in for. After all, you have to have some notion of it in order to want to know anything about it in the first place. If one had no notion of it, one wouldn't have anything to desire out of it. There wouldn't be anything to go, ah, I wonder what he meant by that. Or to say, well, that seems like my kind of thing. That's what I want. But aside from a general overview, you really don't need very much else. You don't need to spend years reading around and about Hegel. Of course, you could, but why do that when you can actually read the man himself? As Hegel notes in the preface of the Phenomenology, most people think that the use of philosophy is its conclusions. It is sorely disappointing, then, when they find that Hegel's conclusions make no sense to them. It's even more disappointing when they find that uh, it's very hard to find conclusions in Hegel at all. Just when you think you've gotten some sort of conclusion, if you're actually reading Hegel, you find out it's not a conclusion, there's something more. But in Hegel, the conclusion and the way we get the conclusion is of prime importance. There is no final and great conclusion that finally is the thing we were looking for. As a matter of fact, the whole thing that makes Hegel very torturous is that the whole thing that we underwent is exactly what we were looking for, as a whole. It's not an inquiry in which we go, well, you know, that failed, so that's wrong. Well, that failed, so that's wrong. And toss things in and out as we find out that they just don't work completely for what we're looking for. We find out that all these mistakes and errors were actually necessary. We had to find out that they were wrong. They were part of finding out what was true. And therefore, a necessary part of truth. They weren't false in the end. They were just incomplete. As such, his works are written in the way that he develops those conclusions. It's not just conclusions presented to you and then argued for. Rather, it appears as a mere inquiry into a problem. But what is the end? We don't know. How are we to do it? We don't know. Thus, when we're presented with just the so-called results, they make no sense to us. Why don't they and why can't they make sense to us? Well, because we have no idea how we got there. There are things that are logically related, which normally you would never have thought actually are related. How could it ever possibly make sense to you to think that from the end of an inquiry on force and understanding, on the objects of a very basic Newtonian scientific worldview and epistemology, you would get a transition to self-consciousness. And yet you do. And it makes perfect sense. But there is no way I could tell you that in any short amount of words because you'd have to think through it to see it for yourself. And that is one of the difficulties of beginning with Hegel. Hegel refuses to give us the easy way in that every other philosopher seems to give us. You can't take Hegel piecemeal. It makes no sense. One can't open up a book and say, let me just go and see uh, Hegel's specific epistemology. For one, it's not there. It doesn't exist. Secondly, what is there will make no sense without the whole systematic buildup. You can open up the Phenomenology of Spirit to the chapter on absolute knowing and good luck understanding it. To do such a thing is like going and buying a novel and opening up right to the last chapter. You missed the whole point. The whole point was how you got there in the first place. The whole point was the story. The whole point was the journey. The conclusion of the story is worthless without the actual story. And unfortunately for the lazy thinker, a systematic thinker isn't a set of little stories 
that happen to come together. It's actually one long story building up from story to story. As such, you cannot jump in the middle of the story and expect to have any idea of what it's about and what's going on. There will be characters mentioned who have already been developed in the story, but who, of course, since you jumped in, you have no clue about. There will be terms, there will be concepts that have already been explained, but you skipped the explanation. There have been arcs that have already been carried out. There are already sections which have already done certain things, but you wouldn't know that and you wouldn't understand that because it's already been done, it's been built on. So whenever you engage with Hegel, a good thing to ask is, if I was reading a novel with a continuous story, would reading it this way make sense? Hegel's system is made to be thought through and comprehended piece by piece, movement by movement. There is no summary, there is no shortcut. If what you want to understand is Hegel and Hegel's thinking, you are screwed if what you expected was a shortcut. A way to get only what you're interested in without having to take in all the rest. You can certainly find others that will say conclusions similar to Hegel's, and who can argue for them in different ways with actual arguments in the way that you're used to, unlike Hegel. But they aren't Hegel and their reasoning is not Hegel's. And if there's anything mind-blowing about Hegel, it's the reasoning that powers the conclusions. Hegel's reasoning, Hegel's logic, is not like formal logic. Things aren't true or convincing because they happen to be in a non-contradictory form. Rather, they are true and convincing because the content necessarily develops that way. Hegel's logic is tied directly with the content that is being thought. Now, that's not to say that you can't read the philosophy of right, or the philosophy of spirit, or the philosophy of nature, or the philosophy of history, the philosophy of art, from the get-go. While Hegel's philosophy is one long-running story, old characters don't show up too often after a certain while. So various stories, various subsystems, subsciences are intelligible, are followable, even if you don't understand all the details. But the one character which you must know first and above all, the one thing you have to really know and you can never let go of, and it will always be there, is the method. If you know the method, if you can master it, then you can enter every single one of Hegel's sub-sciences with great confidence. I've done it myself, and I can tell you that if you can master the method, you can go into the phenomenology and find it to be amazingly clear and intelligible. Not easy, it's going to be difficult, but it's going to make sense. Even the preface makes sense once you understand how to think about it. Now, to say something about the preface. Many people, including myself at first, miss the subtlety about the fact that the preface is there to tell you about what the general project of Hegel is. It is not just a preface to the phenomenology. In fact, it's a preface to the entire system. Hegel's enigmatic remarks about substance as subject, of the absolute as a result, using familiar terms in unfamiliar ways, seeing as the preface is a sort of preview of the end results, of course it's not going to make complete sense. It's not meant to. Yet even lacking the knowledge of how we get to the end results, Hegel tries to give us some ways to understand these things. Ways which are in line with his philosophy, as well as our common sense. The enigmatic claim, for example, that substance is subject is elaborated over three sections which are not next to each other. Yet when one keeps in mind what Hegel says in all three sections and simply is charitable towards what he says, it makes a lot of sense. You could go in, have no clue about spirit, have no clue about sublation, have no clue about determinacy, but it will make sense. You'll find how to read it. You'll notice where Hegel defines things. And even those enigmatic claims and definitions and links will be made sense of since you will know how it is you should go about linking it together. So to wrap up, how to begin with Hegel? Well, one, get an overview. Find out if you even care about Hegel's project. And two, learn the method. Now, if you want to go and read a lot of secondary literature, that's fine. Read all you want and take all the time that you want. 
But I would hope you would remember that eventually you have to read the real deal yourself. And if you don't know the method, then you won't be able to do the real thing. There are a lot of people who can read Hegel and, thanks to secondary literature, make good sense of it. But when it comes to doing it themselves, to understanding for themselves what it is that exactly makes the whole thing go, they can't do it. And it's not because they're idiots, it's not because they're fools, it's because they didn't pay attention to how Hegel thinks about it, how the thinking functions, and as far as I'm aware, there isn't much secondary literature that actually gets down to it either. As a matter of fact, if anybody knows about good secondary literature on this, please let me know. Now, for a recommended overview, um, my favorite is Richard Croner's Hegel's Philosophical Development. It's about 40 pages. It does assume familiarity with uh, German idealism to some extent, but not too much. It goes a bit over Kant, Schelling, eh, some other stuff. It's more of historical, personal background of Hegel as well as just what his general philosophy is about. As for other introductions... If you don't mind a bit of dryness, but you value clarity, James Crine's reason in the world is fantastic. He talks about Hegelianism without using the jargon of Hegelianism. His work is, however, written for a general philosophical enthusiast, who is not afraid to look up things on the internet when they need to. Richard Dean Winfield's Hegel in the Future of Systematic Philosophy is also great, but is a lot more technical. Still readable for a non-Hegelian, but can't say it's the most exciting read. Holgate's introduction to Hegel's logic is also very good, but also technical. Uh, I can also recommend Alan White's books, but also technical. As for recommended commentaries, I actually abstain from reading too much secondary literature on things that I'm reading, so as far as Hegel goes, I haven't actually read any commentaries in full. I do read secondary literature, a lot of overviews and things, essays, articles, but I abstain from reading commentaries on texts. Call me crazy, but I really enjoy thinking through them. Until next time, this was Antonio Wolf. Thanks for listening.